Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Now, uh, I know I've been a bit slack with the videos lately, but uh, I've been a bit busy. I've been a bit busy, so I uh, haven't had time to do too much, uh, too much amateur radio. Uh, slowly acquiring some more bits and pieces for the amplifier. I've got this, uh, got this rather nice ceramic former here that uh, I'm going to wind the input coil on. I need a little air spaced uh, capacitor to go with that. Remember uh, the HF amplifiers having an L uh, tuned input circuit. Um, and uh, the capacitor will either go at uh, one end or the other end of the coil depending on the input impedance of the uh, of the GS35. But um, there's, the, uh, there's the ceramic former and uh, complete with the uh, with the fiber washers there to uh, prevent it cracking um, if it expands slightly so that's uh, that's excellent very happy with that also um, I've got this now this is quite interesting um, now it's uh, it's got some nice uh, some nice insulators to mount it on they're not ceramic but uh, they're fine uh, it's the right sort of diameter and this, I think, came from a broadcasting installation. Part of a broadcast transmitter, maybe, I think this was. Um, but uh, it's quite interesting in that it's got, a, it's got a shorted turn inside it to adjust the inductance. I've never seen that before. I've seen variometers, you know, where you've got the two coils, um, normally in uh, sort of commercial... Uh, comms uh, HF, mainly old HF stuff, like uh, military stuff, would have uh, a variometer in it. And uh, they match quite well, but they're not overly efficient, the variometers. Um, and I thought, well, this has got a shorted turn. I just wonder what sort of inductance this is. Um, I expect probably to have to rewind this uh, with thicker wire. This is 2mm. I was thinking of 3mm as a minimum. And uh, but uh, the former is uh, ideal. I didn't want to use PVC because it shrinks. This stuff is uh, is perfect. But I thought, just out of curiosity, as I have uh, recently uh, built one of these one of these uh, Ultronics LC meters, why don't I? Uh, just see what sort of inductance it is. See whether I could actually use it if I wanted to. See how much variation of inductance I get. Okay, so let's short these out. There we go. Apologies for the shaking. It's not uh, that I've chosen a bad week to give up amphetamines or sniffing glue. That's it. As usual, I'm leaning around the tripod. And I'm in a peculiar position because I've got the handle for the camera, which is sticking out at 90 degrees. Well, actually, it's 180 degrees to this chopping board. So it's sort of pressing on my chest as I'm trying to leave around it, if you see what I mean. Uh, OK, so. There we go, it's calibrating. Uh, there we go, now it's calibrating. Zero micro Henry's. And if you can see that, oh, just moving it around is changing it as you might expect. Okay, all right. Well, let's uh, keep that. Let's keep that as close to how I'm going to use it as possible, like that. Calibrate it. Okay, now that says zero micro Henry's. You might not be able to see that, but uh, take my word for it, it does. Okay, so lean around the bloody camera. I'll put that on there. And that on there. The other end of the coil, that one. Okay. I think I might saw this bloody handle off, you know. It's a bloody nuisance. Okay. So that is saying that that coil is 
6.3 microhenries. Now I reckon that I'd probably need, I don't know, maybe 9, four, nine microhenries for 80 metres and probably about 3 microhenries, 2.5 microhenries for 10 metres maybe. So that's in the ballpark actually. That's in the ballpark. I'll just adjust that. See what sort of adjustment range we get there. Oh, seven. 7.16. So 7.1. 7.16 is a maximum. And 6. Yeah, about 6. 6.18. 6.18 is a minimum. Uh, there we go. So as it is, um, I can't. Uh, as it is, I can't use it. So what I'll have to do is uh, I'll rewind that. And uh, I'll take the shorty turn out, and um, I'll just have a standard, uh, standard tap coil on that. So the uh, the windings will be closer together, and I'll use thicker wire. Uh, but uh, that former is absolutely spot on. Um, it'll probably go from end to end, I would suspect. Um, and uh, I'll show you the uh, I'll show you the finished coil when uh, when it's wound up. Okay, so that's that. That's my input coil former. I've shown you that. Now the other thing I was thinking of, uh, I've never actually done this, but I thought I might just for a change. Uh, use some steel wire for the antenna instead of copper. So I've got some of these nice eggshell insulators, they're only I think a dollar each from Ted Emtron, something like that. And uh, put the uh, put the crimp thing on there. I didn't actually have a crimp device, so I used a cold chisel and a hammer, which is why that's not a really nice straight line, but you know, that's that's not gonna move. That's that's firm enough in there, no problem at all. It's just two mil, two mil um, stainless steel wire rope from the hardware shop. Thirty meters of it for about uh, thirty-eight bucks, I think it was. Uh, they do some three point two mil, but I thought I'd try the two mil. Um, now, I've read. Uh, some negative stuff about using steel wire. Um, I've certainly uh, I certainly measured a meter a resistance the resistance of a meter of this and compared it to a meter of copper and a meter of copper is about 0.1 ohms this is about 0.4 you know so 30 meters times 0.4 um, so what's that uh, 12 ohms so it's going to be 12 ohms uh, from uh, from end to end whereas the copper would be uh, considerably less than that be three ohms I think. Uh, it would be, yeah, three ohms. So, um, so considerable dis difference in resistance. And remember the way radio waves are generated. You have the uh, the electrons running up and down the radiating element, and as they do so, they dissipate energy as an electromagnetic field. And uh, any resistance to the current um, causes um, is going to cause um, I don't know heating in the wire. And uh, that uh, uh, that amount of heat is obviously energy that's not in your electromagnetic field, if you see what I mean. So, um, 15 ohms is probably not going to be a great deal. Um, I think you'd probably need laboratory equipment to actually measure the difference in uh, in, in field strength using steel wire, uh, using copper wire. Uh, it could actually work out how much power would be lost. In, in the wire but um, I don't think it's going to be terribly much and the other thing too that occurred to me you know people say don't use steel wire um, for antennas and I thought well if you think about AM broadcasting stations they use steel lattice towers don't they as radiating elements vertical steel lattice towers as radiating elements so you know they don't use copper vertical copper towers do they so uh, I thought well I'll try the uh, I'll try the steel wire um, and uh, and see what happens, because remember I'm going to use that L match, the L match I showed you last time, 
uh, just to get a match on uh, on each band and then I'm going to try and make up a, a fixed um, uh, number of parallel L tuned circuits in a box so that they'll just match the antenna on the bands that I'm interested in so I won't need to use the auto tuner and I won't use, need to use the, the variable L match um, I'll just use the variable L match to uh, uh, give me a match on each band. I'll measure the value of the capacitance and the uh, the, um, the inductance, and um, I'll just you know make up a little chart. Then I'll make up a little box with those inductance and capacitance values for each band, and just stick them in parallel. And uh, hopefully, the uh, the RF will go down the uh, the path of preferred impedance. So there we go. That's just uh, that's just what I've got in mind anyway. I've got 30 meters of this stuff. It's not going to be particularly long, but I reckon it's probably going to be okay. Um, I'll let you know uh, when I do get around to actually putting this up. I've got to go to tennis ball yet, so I can uh, throw some uh, uh, some grunt camouflage nylon rope over some trees, and uh, I'll pull that up and. Um, give it a thrash. I don't know whether it's going to be this side of Christmas to be honest but uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Alright well uh, as always thanks for watching I don't think I've got anything else. As I say I've been pretty slack there's not been a great deal going on with with, with uh, regard to the amateur radio. Haven't done any mobile stuff. Haven't done much more to the amp. Um, in fact I haven't done any more to the amp but uh, now that I've got these other two components um, it might be time to do a little bit more. Just got to get one air spaced capacitor as I said for the input. Oh, I'll tell you what I might do. I was reading somewhere that uh, the input impedance of the PA um, just with the filament on um, doesn't change if you don't have the uh, don't have the HT on. So without the HT on, just having the filament on on the uh, on the tube and the blower, of course, um, you can uh, you can look at the input impedance. Uh, of the tube at um, the, the bands that you're interested in and I thought well I might give that a go because if that's true and that doesn't change then I could just fire up the PA um, on the bench and uh, look at it with the UKIT's antenna analyzer and just see how the input to that looks on each band um, and then maybe uh, match that with the old match measure the values and uh, just put them on a little chart so that I can make my um, Input uh, input tuning circuit. In fact, if I do that, and that turns out to be true, I wouldn't need um, I wouldn't actually need a variable capacitor because I'd be able to make up uh, um, a little. Uh, just make this up. Well, I was going to make this up uh, with uh, with this coil uh, with taps on it anyway. Um, but um, it may be that I can do it with uh, with fixed value capacitors. So there's just one knob instead of two. For the input, um, yeah. So anyway, that's just me uh, going off at a tangent, thinking out aloud. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you found that uh, interesting, and um, I'll catch you next time.